good view. Good. It's. I'm very happy to be here. Very privileged to be here, and uh, very humbled to be here because uh, uh, I feel like some of the folks here could could do this much better than me. So <laughs> I'll just uh, do the best I can and and show you what I know and maybe tell you a few stories. Hello to Facebook there. Do the best I can here for the view, anyways. And uh, this is this is live. This is kind of funny how this works. You know, you can actually live stream something. I thought it would be fun to reach out to some of the people on, on Facebook too so and then it's interesting they can replay it you know it's like so if they don't see it now they can watch it later kind of thing so anyways they'll see me floating in and out of here but they, they have a view of the art so um, basically I'm, uh, I'm an artist uh, from Green Bay Wisconsin and uh, go Green Bay Packers right yeah. Aaron Rodgers you know uh, I'm glad that uh, I married my wife first because Aaron Rodgers is not married right now as we speak. So, so he's you know he's out of the question because she's already taken. You know how that works. So, um, yeah, I'm from Green Bay and and I learned how to oil paint from my art teacher John Gordon, who most people they go, well, who's that? You know. And then I always tell them that, that he's the guy that designed the Green Bay Packer logo. And then I get the oohs and ahs. So, so yeah, he's, he's a really uh, very disciplined artist, and he taught me how to paint in oil. So. But uh, there's about six different things that I like to do. I like working in, in uh, pencil and pen and ink. Although pen and ink's very unforgiving. If you don't get it right, you kind of wrecked it. You know how that works. And uh, I've also worked in colored pencil, um, which is fun color pencil portraiture then you don't even have to color the background in many times because the drawing just lets itself stand out and I worked in a oil pastel which I'm going to show you tonight a little bit and oil paint and the sixth one is latex paint girls where you just take the colors on the wall in here are a latex probably and if I take three of the primary colors red yellow and blue and then I use black and white and say brown I can mix any color I want, pretty much, except bright neon colors like the this little lady here has the bright yellow greenish there. I wouldn't be able to mix that one, so I'd have to order that specially. But uh, anyways, those are about the six things I work with. I've never worked, I, well, I have worked with watercolor, but I haven't done a whole lot with it. Uh, I see a beautiful gouache painting back there. I've never really, really worked with gouache either, so there's. I haven't done everything, so. I wouldn't call myself an expert either, but like I said, I'll show you what I know. Uh, we're working with oil pastel tonight. This is just basically like, you know, if you go to any uh, art store, you'll typically find, you know, an intermediate brand of oil pastels, you know, and you guys could work with these just as well as I could. They're non-toxic, and when you want to clean up, you can just clean your hands just under the sink, or if you have baby wipes like I like, you just wipe your hands off and throw it, you know. And that's what I like because uh, when you work with oil paints, you got to clean your brushes, and it can take like 20 minutes to do that. So, anyways, this is a you know for six or seven dollars, you just have a lot of fun for just very little money. And then this is basically a, a paper. I use, I like to use a thick paper, especially with oil pastel, because it never really dries. Um, so it and you got to put it under glass because uh, basically it's. You know, it could get smeared just by touching it. It's almost like a chalk drawing would because it won't ever really dry on you. Unless if you're working with an oil painting, it'll dry to the touch. That's why if you go to a museum, you could put your hand on the art even though you're not supposed to. But I've done it with my favorite art pieces. I just want to touch it just to see, you know. And uh, you're not hurting anything. But, uh, but anything that's a drawing, like an oil pastel or colored pencil or pencil, we want to put it under glass. So I've got a frame behind it just in case we put it in a frame tonight. I have a, like kind of just a, a few little lines here that I used for um, my, my drawing here. And it's actually a, called Algoma Sunrise. And I have the picture kind of in my head, so we'll kind of work from memory. So I'll, I'll see if I can pull up Bob Ross tonight, which I don't usually do. Because the genius about Bob Ross is that everything just came up as he worked on it. He didn't work from photo references or anything that we know of and then you always wonder where the Bob Ross paintings went and he just gave them away so what where he really made his business was on the materials that he sold so I'm just using just a uh, Prismacolor 
black colored pencil and there's there's a little element of oil in this or oiliness that will work well with oil pastels so I'm just going to establish a little bit of a horizon line here I was just speaking with uh, Miss Dickinson here and uh, you know you say where, where do you start really you know sometimes it's it's hard to tell where you want to start as on the uh, piece of art and this one will I'll try not to bore you and I'll try to work on it within a reasonable period of time before bed right and, and finish it up but typically a picture maybe half of this size I used to do in probably about 45 minutes uh, because when you really get going once you lay your base down it goes pretty quick with oil pastel so it's pretty fun and if if anybody has any questions just blurt out at me at any any time this is a little lighthouse right here in Algoma we moved about like three years ago to Algoma and uh, it's a sleepy little town there's a little over 3,000 people that live in Algoma we're probably 3,003 and uh, so I'm just gonna sketch this out wish I could have maybe had a, a bigger picture but so I'm just gonna keep it real loose and free you know when I get really detailed I'm going like this and I'm like this but when we get a kind of a looser style your arm is just going and moving so when an artist really gets into it it's almost like a composer with a wand you know and you're conducting the uh, orchestra of the symphony right I'm gonna put some trees hanging over here and it's gonna be uh, the Algoma sunrise that when uh, my wife goes out in the mornings my wife's in the back I don't know if you met her in my my girls in the back that's that's my favorite part of tonight other than meeting everyone here it's all about people art's cool but I think without the people then it's just what's the point right because it's here to put a smile on her face and uh, you know I wouldn't have any fun doing art just by myself there was a time where I could do that but I don't think I could anymore I, I wouldn't even bother to be honest I wouldn't bother sitting there for 300 hours working on a picture of some old boots that I've done before <laughs> it just wouldn't it just wouldn't be fun anymore so I'm just gonna lay a base of like a yellow here my wife likes to go out and take photos of Algoma because obviously we're right on Lake Michigan so you get all these beautiful sunrises and they look different every single day so this is based on a true story and this is going to be like this last week it was like this beautiful red hot orange sunrise it was really intense and then the water almost had like this kind of a rose color and let me see this is where I got to think what color do I want to use next because these colors are cool because uh, you know if I want like a deep purple blue I, I don't have that color so I'm gonna make it and I'm gonna lay this one down first mm -hmm. and lay this over the top and it'll actually create a new color so that's the fun part you don't you're not limited to just the colors in your in your palette you can make them so okay and you can see I'm kind of cleaning the tip because once this goes on here it'll get other colors mixed into the tip of it so I have to clean the tip off every time I work with it usually so we're gonna have a lot of like well pastel colors right since we're using oil pastel and I want to kind of demonstrate this also not not just for uh, the, the sake of an art demonstration but also because I know there's some of you that are gonna want to give this a shot and what's fun about it is it's very forgiving you know if you didn't like it just put it away don't tear it up and throw it away like I used to before my family left my house after the Green Bay Packers bought my old childhood home because they bought up a lot of the property near the as you know they, they paid one and a half times the amount of the property which we didn't get anyways because they left before the the big offers came through anyways I took all my art and the ones I didn't like and I'd roll them up and I'd shove them in between the floorboards because I didn't want to see them anymore so some of them ended up uh, coming out between the floorboards and getting onto the walls and frames and much to my dismay I didn't want to look at them anymore <laughs> So you can see like this, there's just this base here. I'm not driving it into the paper so hard that then it's difficult to actually uh, mix colors into it because I'm going to use a purple 
to get some of the really cool like well I'll just go ahead and show you there's gonna there's these really relaxed uh, waves in the foreground and what I'm gonna do is kind of work them in like this and at that point I'm still not done with the mixing I'm gonna take it I can use a colorless blender which is just a oil pastel that has no color in it or I use I typically use a white I like using white but if I don't want to uh, lighten up the color then I'll try the colorless blender maybe we'll use both of them so you can all maybe give that a try and again like I said it's non-toxic you're not gonna hurt yourself using it you know we don't want to be like Vincent van Gogh and eat our oil paints either right but, you know and so this right here is almost black but when every um, plein air artist knows when you go outside if you look through that window right there, you can see things that are black inside the room, but if you look through the window, nothing is like black. Everything is like a like a blue. Just like a just like a blue in the clothing that you see us wearing. And that's the interesting, but once your eyes focus outside, things the shadows look black. But that's what Claude Monet knew when he painted, and you can see all his colors are very, very bright. So I'm just gonna kind of thicken up the uh, foreground here, or the foreground horizon line, the background, and um, it's a beautiful area in Algoma, they got this beautiful little red lighthouse, what's the name of that lighthouse, hon, do you remember what, what it's called, She maybe she doesn't know, yeah, I just put her on the spot, and how, how mean of me, right, so anyways, there's this beautiful little lighthouse, and they'll paint it every so often, you know, paint is another bright shade of red, so what I want to do is kind of just, I think of art like a puzzle. I want to get all my pieces on the table before I really start putting them together, you know, because it's really annoying when you have a bunch of pieces over here and over there and you're looking for the cloud piece. The cloud piece is in six different places, right? So you want to get them all together, all facing up, and then you can really go to town on it, right? Yeah. So this um, background here, again, I want to make sure that we have a clean tip to work with and it's this isn't exactly the orange I want yet but I'm going to probably actually this might be the exact orange number three orange that's what it's called okay and that made it pretty simple hope all you Facebookers out there are enjoying a little bit of live art we're at the Woodview in Sister Bay Wisconsin with some wonderful people and uh, some professional artists in the crowd, which I was tempted to feel a little nervous, but I don't tend to get nervous. You know, once you got two girls and a wife at home and a dog and a cat named Samson and Delilah, you just don't get nervous anymore, right? But, you know, you, you could feel that way, or you could almost think like, well, what am I doing an art demo for? I want to sit down and, and see what the other people are doing here who've been doing art all their lives, so. But we all have something to share, and uh, that's that's the important thing. And so this is going to be like really strong orange right here, but it's going to kind of blend into a red up on top. So it's going to be like really strong colors. And the interesting thing is, I, I like to tell people on on Facebook. Um, w many years ago, when like when I was joking around about working for three hundred hours on a picture of old boots, which was my art teacher's father's boots. And they had a lot of character all gritty and torn up, you know, and beat up. And I just, I just painted realistically so that it looked like it was something that you could reach into the canvas and grab. Kind of like a William Harnett painting. If anyone's familiar with that famous American artist, I believe, that's what he did. And you would think that you could pull the things right out of his art. And so that's, that was my goal. The only thing is that a lot of my art was very gray, and so when you look at it, it just there's no color, and it just didn't have that like, okay, cheer me up here, you know, show me a a nice sunny day, not just a cloudy day, right? I I think there's beauty in cloudy days and rainy days, but I don't want all my pictures to be rainy days. I want I want to show a nice full scope of it, right? And um, the funny thing about these is they typically kind of look like crayon drawings. And you'd think this is a crayon except there's oil in it 
and the crayon is wax. But that's that's the uh, right now. It kind of has the look of of a Crayola picture. And but when we start working in some of the details, this is where you can kind of let yourself be free as a person, as an artist. I think everybody's an artist with what they do. Uh, my wife's homeschool teacher. Uh, she's also a writer. She likes to write and read novels, and uh, so that's an art form in itself. Music is an art form. Whatever you do can be an art form running a business. And so we're all artists with uh, whatever it is that we enjoy doing. Okay, so we've got this kind of... I don't want to get too busy, but I want to definitely get some more of these graceful type lines in here. Because like I said every day, when I drive past the lake, I just see this beautiful like reflection. It just makes me think of God and all the beautiful things he made for us and how it looks different every day. I'm going to probably use, um, let's say, a dark blue. This is a Prussian blue, it's called on the tag. And we'll put this in the foreground because this pier kind of comes out here like this. You can't see it, but I've got some pencil lines from where my drawing was. And right now you just kind of draw on experience because at some point, yeah, yes, this is that big crescent beach, I think it's called, and it's probably going to get more important now as whitefish dunes is kind of like disappearing for now anyways. It seemed like the water came all the way to the trees. The last time I checked, it didn't look like there was much of a beach there anymore. Unless the water's receded, people are going to be wanting to look for a, another big, beautiful beach somewhere. There's a lot of smaller ones up here. I like the one in Peninsula State Park. Uh, that's one of my favorites. Best kept secret almost for me anyways. And we'll add some red up here. And so you can see how I put a color on here. I can work another color over the top. It's not going to say, oh no you can't, that's too much, you're cut off. You already have a color on there. Now I can keep adding over the top. And I'm um, working in layers. Once I get this blended together, then I'm going to put those uh, trees over the top here. And there'll be a foreground. So like my art teacher taught me, uh, it's, it's funny how when you're working, all those things that you were taught during training all come back. You know, like uh, we have a foreground at that point, then there's a middle ground, and then there's a background. And sometimes that can be, unless you're doing a still life, uh, like that beautiful still life back there. Um, uh, many times you'll see artists have a foreground, middle ground, and a background. And so you could take advantage of that. So one thing about art is I like doing portraiture too. And the thing about a portrait is if I hang it on the wall, what does it do? It looks at every one of us. I can't even do that right now. But I can make a portrait that can. It's kind of like, how is that possible? It's just the way it is. Something about the reflection in the eye and once you get it just right, it'll look, you know, 180 degrees. Even if you're way over here, it'll still look at you from a really uh, steep angle. Portraiture is another thing altogether. It's uh, I've been I, I did some uh, portraits on uh, Facebook Live recently, uh, working with color pencil, and uh, that was fun. It definitely it was a challenge. Actually, it was only my wife said, "Hey, are you going to go on Facebook Live and do that?" And I thought. Uh, I haven't done that before. You know, I've done sceneries, but never, never a portrait. And uh, people really enjoyed it, so I was happy that it turned out. There's just a little bit more going on when you're working with portraits. You know, I could draw a picture of a tree outside, and people could say that looks nice. But if I could do a picture of, say, Aaron Rodgers, everyone's going to know if it looks like Aaron Rodgers or not, or if it looks like, you know, something. Ah. Who is that? You know, I'm not sure what that looks like. So you don't have to be a, a professional musician to know when the clarinet is out of tune, so to speak, right? So as you can see, I'm really pulling out all the stops on using some of the brighter colors. And like I said, this was a really, really bright morning. Somebody submitted the original photograph for this to the Algoma website. And I'm just kind of working from memory, so. But it was really bright. You can take my word for that. I wouldn't lie to you. And uh, we'll.
kind of blend a little bit of orange into here. And so this still is not the end when it comes to blending because we haven't gotten to the colorless blender yet or just using white to blend the colors together. Everybody having fun tonight? Enjoying? Yes. All right. You just let me know if it gets a little boring. Just stick a hand up or something and I'll try to throw some more stories in there, right? I was really happy to uh, see Sister Jennifer Burns here tonight. And I, I just followed the piano notes. I go, that's, that's Jennifer Burns style. I knew right where I was going. <laughs> just follow it right to the piano, right? So she was nice enough to give me directions exactly how to get here and somehow I still found another way to get here. But here we are. We did make it. We came through Fish Creek and uh, my wife and I actually came to Fish Creek about the same year, about 2000. She might have been here in 1999. But I came out to Fish Creek as soon as I graduated from high school in 2001, but I came up in about 2000, and we were just visiting Fish Creek on a family vacation, and they said, hey, let's go and stop at the shops. You know how people just want to stop at a thousand shops, right? So I'm sitting in the van, and I'm a much different person back then. I got my cool shades on. I'm like that guy from Greece, John Travolta. You know, I'm just too cool, too cool for everything. And uh, for the family van, I'm too cool for that at the moment. And now I have my own family van. But uh, they work great, by the way. I prefer the family van over the SUV a lot of times because you can really turn around and tell them to knock it off. You know, when you're, when you, yeah, you can go back there while, while the car is still moving. You can go back there and, and, and shake them up a little. No, just kidding. <laughs> pull, pull the vehicle over for that, right? Anyways, vans are great because you can, you know, you can fit a lot of stuff back there. And uh, so we just came up, and, and uh, really, you know how it is with destiny sometimes is that it's, it just seemed like happenstance, like a twig falling, you know what I mean? And uh, they were, my family was up there just hanging out, talking to somebody, and finally I went in because, what are they doing? I want to go home and do nothing, right? I have nothing going on. And uh, met this little old man named Pepino Rizzuto, who was related to the famous Phil Rizzuto, and he was an old war hero. He used to carry a gun everywhere he went, especially the one that was sitting under my seat when he took me out to eat once. It was pretty funny. He didn't tell me that until uh, later on. I said, oh, you mean the, the seat I'm sitting on? Okay, I see. He was, he was pretty cool, though. Um, it's just how that happened, though. We just came up just for fun, and, and uh, my family ended up saying, well, let's, let's get this young guy into his own art gallery. So. I was there for a couple of years, and you know, the Lord led me on different paths, and I found out, oh, I'm called to ministry? Oh, that's amazing. But that's, that's a whole other story, and, Pat, and my wife, uh, Jennifer, can tell you, you know, later on I married the pastor's daughter, so, so uh, you know, you, you find out a lot of things when you hook up with the right people. And I broke off with the wrong people in high school instead of getting in trouble with the cops back then, right? <laughs> I hook up with the right people and I end up doing the right things, right? So I'm just going to make sure that this dock is pretty dark out here in the foreground. I am using black, it's kind of a no-no for plein air, but because I'm indoors and I'm working with oil pastel, sometimes I use a little black just to darken it up a little bit more. So yeah, we came up here on a family vacation pretty much on a whim and the place wasn't even for sale, but he ended up telling my family that, well, to the right person, we'd sell it. And so he, he had sold it, and then I, I lived with him for the weekends while I finished my senior year in high school. So I got to learn from the, this artist who made a lot of children's books. And uh, he would work on art that he said, you know, you could turn it whichever way, and it would still be balanced. That was the way... And of course, at that time, my thinking was so wrong that I was just uninterested. I'm this 18-year-old kid, I think I know it all. Mm -hmm. And then as you get older, you realize how much you don't know, you know. And uh, we just need, I just needed a whole lot of humility anyways. You know, wanting to be the best artist there ever was is something that's never going to happen. You just can't be the best there ever was. You just have to be the best that we can be because we're all gifted in very special and particular ways. So, uh, it's kind of like 
someone saying, who's the best basketball player of all time? And nobody ever knows. Nobody can ever answer that question, although I think it's Michael Jordan. But uh, you can come up with your own conclusion there. So that's the uh, little lighthouse there. And I want it to kind of stand out real strong, just kind of solitary by itself. Lighthouses are very important, obviously. We have a lot of them up here, as we all know. Many of us know much better than I do. Uh, but there's so many lighthouses, and what they represent is so important, you know. They save and preserve lives and property, and and uh, nowadays, obviously, they're, you know, they're already ready to go as they are, automated. But just the fact that there's so much history with it, like the Eagle Bluff Lighthouse, I've always enjoyed going there. I still like to go inside, but I did see the Cana Island Lighthouse on, on my wife and I's uh, 10th anniversary actually came up to Door County and had a blast. For those Facebook people out there, that is not uh, sound effects coming from a phone. That is actually little finches over there, zebra finches and, and stuff. And so that was one of the first things that caught my ear when I came in here. I thought, live birds, this is awesome. This is really great. I, I really like nature whenever my family and I come out of our house because even though we are homeschooled we do leave the house as you can see we're outside of the house today it's a little joke for you um, and uh, we always explore everything we can uh, for example there's a little known place called Fonfrick Glen in the Green Bay area and most people have never heard of it but out in this farmers field area by new construction homes is this big gully and there's a giant waterfall right out in the middle of nowhere doesn't cost anything to go see it and yeah. I thought well, if, if you google it you can see pictures of it on Ferrick Glen and uh, most nobody's ever heard of it I found out because I was looking at a Green Bay uh, magazine of attractions and stuff what magazine I'm sorry. I think it might have been it had a picture of the Packer Hall of Fame on it the inside where they had all the co the uh, uniforms from way back mm -hmm. coming around to the newer ones and whatever that was it had an article about this place that I'd never seen before. And it, usually, when I was a kid, we'd go to all the places on field trips, like Weequiock Falls and Fallen Timbers and all these places. And uh, those were some of my favorite trips when I was a kid. So I thought, let's do that for our kids. Every chance we get, we're at the wildlife sanctuary, we're at the new zoo, and uh, it's a lot of fun. So we like to explore. Sometimes we have literally pushed it so hard Dad is massively grumpy driving the van because we've been going like all day long at Wisconsin Dells or something, or wherever we were the Minnesota last year. That was a blast. Finally, I said, let's just go back to the hotel, order some pizza, and it was the best night. We had pizza in the hotel room. It was a good time. To this day, my wife still makes the best pizza I've ever had, so she's getting better and better at it. When she started, she was good. Right? But now she's gotten better and better. And now it's like, we don't even want to go out to eat anymore. But you got to give her a break every now and then, right? She can't be making food all the time. Right, hon? Yes. Give me an amen back there. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of accentuate some of these lines. Remember, um, I used to be like, I got to get everything exactly right. Everything has to be perfect. That's a lot of pressure, you know what I mean? And really, once these lines happen in nature, they're gone, and you really can't get it exactly like that anyways. As every artist knows as you grow up, it's like, I'm not going to try to paint that tree exactly right. I'm going to take an impression of it the best I can. And so right here, this is where it starts to get really strong. And I'm having a lot of fun on this one tonight because, well, I get to use some of these really, really bright colors. I had a fellow artist named Kim Wiggins tell me once that as you grow as an artist, I suppose in anything we do, you could take that as a symbolism, uh, you want to grow and find your own niche. And the uh, time that he realized that as a young artist was when he went to an art show and he went to go find his art and he, and he thought he was going to see his art and he realized it was another artist. As he got closer, he realized my art is not standing out from any any other artist, really. So he realized he needed to just focus on his own style. And so as he grew, he definitely has his own style now. And this is what he actually recommended that I work on. 
out of all the different styles that I that I have done. He said, work on those oil pastels. That's what you want to work on. And if you look at Kim Wiggins' art today, Kim Douglas Wiggins, he's he has very bright colors in uh, Roswell, New Mexico, I think he works out of. So he had some really, really good advice. And once when you find someone you can get really good advice from, you really, you just tap in every now and then, just check in. And uh, not not every time have I had that where you talk to an artist and they even give you the time of day, really. But such is life, right? Just hang up and try again, right? So I'm going to kind of thicken up right here. Is this kind of looking like the Algoma Sunrise you remember last week, just a little? All right. Well, what else are you going to say, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I always, I joke around with my family because, you know, like the Bible says, let another man's lips praise you, you know, not your own. And so that's, I'm not going to walk around and tell you I'm a good artist or great ex expert artist or anything, but sometimes I hear things from my family and I feel like, wow, don't let, want, I don't want that going to my head, right? And I walk around with a big old head. But I always kind of think like maybe they're a little biased anyways, because if you see American Idol and you watch the outtakes, the person is singing and it sounds really, really, really bad, like break the glass and the window bad, and they just do not believe that the judges are right. They believe that I sound beautiful. My family thinks I sound beautiful, right? And so I always think of that, like, I want to make sure that it's not just my family and friends that like the art, right? So I always think of American Idol that way. And uh, thankfully, if I make a bad piece of art, it's not going to break the glass in the window at least, right? right. <laughs> but I do keep it. You know, even if I can tell maybe I didn't hit it on all cylinders, you ever get up in the morning, and you live out your whole day, and it was kind of like not your best day. Well, not a problem, you know, you, you don't scrap the day, you learn something from it, you got to see someone you love probably. And we take the, you know, we take the good, and sometimes we take the bad too, with this life that we live, right? But, you know, I don't take it and just throw it in the trash anymore, or throw it between the floorboards, right? That's, that's important not to do that. Listen up kids back there. They were working away on there. Their art. That's the Algoma Pierhead Lighthouse. Algoma Pierhead Lighthouse, officially. And it's, I was told by the man who sold us our house that it was one of the most photographed or videoed um, lighthouses. Or that it showed up, I don't know if it showed up in movies or what, but it sounded like it. I'm going to give this uh, Sennelier, I think it's pronounced, probably the more expensive type of oil pastel. It's busted in half, normally it's like that long. And this is a colorless blender. So if I take that and I just kind of blend this together, I can take colors and, and just merge them. Because, I mean, you could leave it like that, but the way that I like to do it, I don't, I don't want to see a lot of the white paper showing through. So I can take the colorless blender and just kind of mush it all together. Everyone say, mush it. Mush it. Mush it all together. You know, us artists, a little strange sometimes. I like smells. I like the smell of cedar. It's almost like addicting. Put me in a room of cedar wood and I'm just the happiest guy ever, right? And my wife thinks I'm funny sometimes because I'll comment on smells. And I'm around coffee a lot, so it kind of takes the your nose and, and makes it more sensitive to smell. So I've always liked the smell of oil paints. Uh, just the linseed oil that's inside of it kind of just gets in your blood, I guess. But I think uh, smells are important, you know, because once you smell something, it takes you back to that moment, you know, for better or for worse. But uh, they, they kind of tend to trigger certain memories. And though I work with oil paints a lot less than I used to, um, I, work, I work with a lot more stuff that can allow me to expand as an artist uh, so I don't stagnate. And I think sometimes people can just do that in life. You just get in the same old rut and you do the same thing every day and that's all that ever happens because you kind of, whether you're five years old or 105, you can stagnate, right? And you can just kind of, this is just the way it's going to be. But that's not the way it's going to be. That's just the way we think sometimes. And so if I wanted to, I could have given up some years back and said, I'll just, 
I'll just paint old boots the rest of my life and wow people with my realism, you know. But that's not where my heart was anymore. And I just felt the need to do something different. So if you ever feel like you're stagnating, uh, it doesn't mean you need to get up and leave where you are and go somewhere else, leave the country or leave the state. Just maybe there's something you could learn, a new skill. Maybe you're like an expert at something you don't even know. Some people have picked up art much later on in their lives, and now we know them as what the Grandma Moses and and all these 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 famous artists that Van Gogh. He only worked for about ten years, and uh, he made all of the art that he made. I mean, he just went wild doing oil paintings and drawings and everything. So as you can see, I'm kind of. It's almost like the effect of taking, and by the way, you can use all these oil pastels, put them on a canvas board, and you can use thinner or mineral spirits in a brush. It's a little bit more busy, because you gotta clean your brushes now, right? You know, but anyways, if you don't mind doing that, you can actually paint with oil pastel. It has that capability, and I've done that at my home studio too, but I knew, I knew it was gonna take too long to do that tonight, so. I wanted to go back to an oil pastel on paper. So I, I was actually kind of excited for the first time in my life about daylight savings time just uh, this week because we have a little bit more daylight tonight. And, uh, but probably the first time in my life. Is it, has daylight savings time ever benefited anyone in the room? Yes. Raise your hand. You, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> we should all just sign a petition and get rid of it, right? Anyways, it, it just... It's a day longer. It is nice. Yeah. Seems like it takes about a week to get used to it, right? But if you like it, you know, maybe, maybe you're the majority. Nothing wrong with that. So I'm just kind of blending this orange here. And then there's, there's happy little accidents that I can get, oh thank you. I call them happy little accidents and I was inspired from Bob Ross when I say that. There are no mistakes, only happy accidents, right? <laughs> so you could take like this red here and you can kind of bring in a little bit of a, you can see, just pull out a little something. Just something that maybe you saw 10 years ago, but you didn't have a camera with you. I know there's sometimes, you know, back in the day before we had smartphones, you know, we, uh, had to just look at it and enjoy it, right? But now we, we like to take photos. I know uh, Jennifer Burns, she likes to share a lot of pictures of her land with me. And I always go, wow, that's a great photo. Of course, it never catches exactly what you saw that day, but it's a really good memory. And uh, she's taken some really nice pictures. Uh, my, my wife, Jennifer, takes a lot of cool pictures, too, of Algoma. She's a big Algoma fan. Um, there was a time where I even came through Algoma years ago and I, I thought, oh, that's, that's a nice little town. I'm glad to leave now, you know? I just had a totally different attitude about things. Or even, say, ministry. I just, I, oh, you want me to do that? Oh, I don't think so, God. I'm not really interested in that. And uh, he just has a marvelous way of changing attitudes. And that's probably about the hardest thing on earth to change. It's probably easier to move up mountain range than change a person's attitude, right? <laughs> You've all been there. And uh, sometimes it can take a long time. It's like, it's like tempering steel to uh, think differently about something. Or like I said, there was a time when doing this just by myself was just like, uh, what's the word? Nails on a chalkboard. It was just really hard to get myself to think any differently. And what's cool about art is you know, it's just, it's relaxing, it's fun. Uh, anybody can do it. You don't have to be a, a Rembrandt to do art. And you don't need to put that pressure on yourself either. Uh, you just do it because, you know, when people work on puzzles, they don't beat themselves up if they take too long at it or if they take another hour on it, right? You just build it and you have fun, right? And so even if it took you maybe a few more hours to do this, a few more days or a few more months. You still got there, didn't you? Some people go, oh, I could never do that. I go, oh yeah, you could. Maybe it'd take a little longer, but you could do it, right? And so my art teacher was a big advocate for, for basically saying that, you know, uh, 
he could teach just about anybody if they were willing and and desired and wanted to work hard enough at it that he could teach them how to draw and paint at a certain level no maybe we're not all called to be a vincent van gogh or a michelangelo or a leonardo but again not many people have that kind of a natural talent but what i'm talking about is let's just say i want to play piano i want to play piano or a, i want to swim or something which is a whole other story but if I want to play piano, I may not want to be Rachmaninoff, right? But I could be as good as I could get and play music that my, my family likes at Christmas, you know what I mean? So we all have different level of goals. And uh, bringing that story up, I, I actually had a great phobia and fear of water for many years as a kid because I had some really bad experiences in my childhood. I was allowing to, you know blend into the rest of my life and until I hit almost 30 I decided I'm going to do something about this. I've got kids now and I don't want them being afraid of deep water especially with all the water in the Great Lakes and all the water around us right. So I kind of took matters in my own hands. It took a matter of years probably three years. What do you think hon? Just off and on working at with three or four instructors just taking baby steps. You know, like the movie What About Bob, which is a totally ridiculous movie. There's two kinds of people in the world, people that think that's a funny movie and people that watched it for 10 minutes and shut it off immediately because they couldn't stand it anymore. Well, there's some truth to it, though, because there's baby steps. So I took a lot of baby steps until I could be on the diving board, jumping into the deep end, and it was not a pretty-looking dive whatsoever, but it made no difference because I did it, had fun doing it, and I wasn't feeling like, uh-oh, I'm going to be dead in 10 minutes, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, once you, once you learn how to float and you learn how to swim, you're just not scared of it anymore, right? And so, it, it's like that with anything. Once you give it a shot, you can have fun with it. Maybe, maybe it's not something you really want to do, and that's fine. But, you know, maybe you always wanted to do something else. Maybe you always wanted to uh, try a different skill, like knitting or sewing or whatever. And... Uh, I'd say just go for it. Just learn a new skill. What can I learn new today? Everybody can learn something new every day, right? So we got the pier coming out here. And we are having fun in Sister Bay right now. It's a beautiful little place you guys got up here, by the way. It's pretty impressive. And I'm, I'm really happy to live in a place like this. And just the fact that you know, when I drive home tonight, Algoma is only like an hour from here, or about an hour and five minutes or so. But uh, Fish Creek is about 55 minutes. It's pretty cool that all of this, this beauty that we see every day is just right there staring at us. It's so easy to take, take it for granted. Like, But when I left Green Bay and I got out of the concrete jungle, so to speak, and all of the Sundays with people going to the Packer game and getting drunk and urinating in our bushes you know I got tired of that and I I just didn't I didn't like all of that I wanted to be around trees and so when I came up to Fish Creek and I got a, I got around Peninsula State Park I was there like if I had a day off I was there for like 12 hours like all day just just praying and enjoying myself you know getting fresh air and actually bumped into my wife one time coming right out of the park just how, how do you plan that, right? Come out of the exit, and there she is coming by on her bike. Hey, how's it going, you know? I was walking around with my shirt off, looking all cool. And probably getting mosquito bites or something. So oil pastels are cool because they're, like, really, like, creamy. The creamy consistency of it, you can work with it, and, and then you get your happy accidents. So that's the fun part. And you got to be patient with it, you know, sometimes in the process of a piece of art, it can kind of look ugly to your human eye, but just don't think negative that way. Just take your time working out, you know, and maybe you don't want to work quick. Maybe you want to spend a week on it, spend a couple weeks on it. Just poke around with it anytime you get a chance. Getting ready to put those trees in that I promise. We're going to plant some trees today. They're going to grow up real fast. Yeah, we like Netflix at our house, so we like to put Bob Ross on. and He's a real inspiration. There was one time in my life, remember, when I was very critical and judgmental, 
where anybody that didn't paint like Rembrandt was just, they're just not good enough. Those colors are too bright. That's just all commercialized art and all of this buffoonery, right? And uh, now, nowadays, I look at every art, every piece of art, as long as it's made from the heart, it's got great value to me because it's all very unique. Whether that person's a professional artist or not, it doesn't make any difference to me. And I look at Bob Ross and I go, wow, here's a guy that he, you know, he just really basically wants to share art with other people and, and help them to learn how to do it. And at that time when he was alive, you could see these Bob Ross schools sprouting up everywhere. Hobby Lobby. You could go to Hobby Lobby and learn how to paint like Bob Ross overnight, you know? And I did a couple of Bob Ross paintings too that ended up in frames. But, you know, I mean, whatever happened to that, he was doing something that most people would not want to learn how to have to do, create a piece of art in 30 minutes and talk about it. Talk about your baby squirrels that you raised in your house that eat nuts out of your shoes and hide nuts in your shirt pocket. True story, he would, he'd have these little baby squirrels running around in his house. I don't know how he did it. He'd call them little devils. he always take his brush, beat the devil out of it. You know, thump, 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 thump. It's just funny. I just had an idea there. I want to maybe kind of create a little bit of like a highlight here in the sky. And uh, again, you know, you kind of see stuff as you work. And I don't know how to explain it, but... I think the same thing will happen with Bob Ross. He'd be working on something. I go, what is he going to do next? And then he comes up with some little idea, and there's a, there's a tree growing out of nowhere and some rocks. And I was like, that's the beauty of his art, that he could just come up with stuff like that, just inventing things as he went. And so anyone that's like real critical of that now, I always make sure I share my side of, my point of view on it, the positive side of it, that, you know, he was a very great artist and, what made him a great artist is that he shared everything he knew. He taught everything he knew about what he did as an artist. So, so I like to use kind of more graceful lines when I'm working. And especially toward the end when you have all your puzzle pieces together, this is where you can fit stuff together. And then I'll just kind of really kind of push things around and have a lot of fun with it. I want to just do a little bit more in the foreground. It is a little different at times when you're working almost from the side and so you can see it. Or else normally when the artist is working, you kind of like this. But that'd be a little bit odd if I were to do that and you get to stare at the back of my head, which is probably not very interesting, you know. So, so I want to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing. Really enjoying these uh, stained glass art panels behind me. I'm not sure the artist who made it or else I'd give them a little credit, but they're pretty nice looking. And uh, a, lot of, a lot of times these days, um, you could see more, you know, I, I guess you could say some things are more commercialized, but there's always art out there that's handmade uh, I don't think, you know, maybe it's a little harder to find a, a nicer piece of furniture, one that isn't going to be like a Walmart bookcase where the, the bookshelves are like, look like a U or something after five years. But, uh, you know, you can always find something that's well made. And I don't believe in throwaway generation. I like to take stuff and fix it and keep using it until, you know, there's just nothing left to use. I think it's a fun challenge anyways. My wife can tell you, you know, when I had to work on the water heater <coughs> a couple times, it was a little testy at first and didn't really get it right. We don't have any hot water yet. We don't have any hot water yet. Okay, I'll buy one tomorrow. Tweaked one little thing and boom, we had it back. So sometimes you just got to keep at it, right? Yeah. And sometimes you need to call the professionals, but... Is. The funny thing about being a professional is I've seen professionals do work sometimes and it's not professional work. It's like, okay, you come, I'll watch you do it, and then I'll do it myself next time. <laughs> We've all been there before. You wish that wasn't the case, but when a guy doesn't fill up your oil change, he only puts it to the minimum. He doesn't put it to the max. That's a problem, you know, because there's not enough oil in the, in the, in the motor now, so... I like to double check and make sure 
one of those things I wouldn't mind doing myself, but can't exactly put my vehicle up on jacks right now. So I'm just going to kind of work in around this a little bit, kind of finish up what I'm planning here. And then I want to add these trees that are not here right now. I'm going to have to use a black to do it because a lot of times that's the tricking of the eye part. When you look outside and you see something really, really bright in the distance, the foreground is like black. You can't make out anything with it. And so from my recollection, and that's, that's the nice thing about this, this black when it goes over the top, if I were working in oil paint right now, I'd be mixing those colors together. But this black actually just goes right over the top. And that's the fun part of it. And so this, this, this tree was just kind of elegantly what I've noticed about tree branches if you just kind of look at it funny like I do sometimes if you look at a branch from where it hits the tree it looks like a tree by itself like it has a trunk and then there looks like another tree growing off of it so if you're making up trees as you work think of doing that because they you know they do come to an end but there's always a little bit it's always wanting to grow out a little bit more you know And so it kind of frames the picture. And of course the trunk of a tree is very thick and then the branches get skinnier and skinnier. You don't want to do it the other way around because then you'll probably end up with something that looks like a Salvador Dali painting, right? <laughs> Nothing against Salvador Dali, but that's not my style. He was a very good artist. Even Picasso himself, as everyone knows, very great painter. He started out very classically trained. Probably some of you already know that anyways, but he worked with soft oil pastels and, and things like that. So that's the interesting thing that, that I learned is that as I decided, okay, I'm going to start growing as an artist here and doing some things I don't feel comfortable with right off the bat, I realized, you know, that's no different than what many other artists have done themselves. You, you just have to grow, you have to try something new because like I said, the old, the old boots wasn't doing it for me anymore and it was getting really boring really fast. And if, if my one goal was just to trick somebody's eye, then you know, there's, that's, that's not entirely anything brand new either. I'd rather do something that, that is something new and innovative, I suppose. How's my girls doing back there? You having fun? Very nice work there. Oh, you're enjoying it? Can you see it from back there? Yeah. Pretty, okay. I can even see the little tiny bit of the lighthouse. Okay. That's a good point because if you look at a piece of art up close, it's also fun to think of it like as a thumbnail picture, like the Fran Dickinson picture back there. As a thumbnail from here, it's still a beautiful painting. So if you can see a picture like if she sees the lighthouse back there, that's because I put a dark outline around it and I left it really bright behind it. So it'll pop out even from probably 40 feet away. So there's some science to it. Um, you know, some artists, they, they use on purpose the, the golden <laughs> ratio, uh, like would be on the, I think it's a snail or something, where it kind of goes like this and it's like a golden ratio. And some artists do that by nature, just like you find it in nature and other artists do it on purpose and they, they add it into their art. I have never really thought of it myself and never really felt led to do it, but if it was in there, it's only because I, you know, it just came naturally if that were the case. I also want to add a tree over here that really wasn't in the original picture, but because we're artists, we can do what we want, right? I could add some people walking along on the Crescent Beach boardwalk or whatever. Not too long ago, I was over by Hydeside on the uh, edge of Fish Creek when you come down the hill. And I was working on some pictures of that bear that's, that's sitting there kind of like this on his, on his two legs. And it reminds me of our dog, our dog Samson, who when he wants something, he sits up on his legs and he goes like this oh. for like 10, 20 minutes. He'll do it. 
for no apparent reason, just to be cute, you know? And he, he lets the cat come up sometimes and, and assert her authority, and sometimes she just gives him a little, just a love bite right on his rear leg, just <clears throat> like that. And he'll be like, what's up with that? You know, what are you doing? And so they, they kind of they kind of like wrestle with each other sometimes. It's really cute. Not like fighting like cats and dogs, but like like a brother and sister. You know how that is? Just come up and just give you one just every now and then and then run away. It's kind of funny. It's funny to watch them. But then we'll catch them like uh, sitting next to each other and sleeping right next to each other. They're really cute. So yeah, how we came up with our dog and cat, Samson and Delilah. That's uh not totally sure. I think, was that my, did I pick their names? Is that what happened there? Something like that. It kind of worked together. I did Delilah and you did Samson. Okay. That's interesting. I've, I've been told that my wife and I make a good team, so, so in that case, you know, she'd be my, my better half there. <laughs> she has Panamanian and Colombian, but also English in her, from her dad. And so that's kind of an interesting clash there, right? You know, English and like South American, Latina, with all of the groove and the, the moves and the, the saucy and the sassy and all that. Like they come out of the womb just knowing how to dance, you know what I mean? And then she meets this Polish guy that's just like, moves like a brick, you know what I mean? And then if I think I've got a good move, she goes, what is that? What is that, you know? We went to dance class once, and I think it lasted three classes. It wasn't, it wasn't like dirty dancing. I wasn't Patrick Swayze. I found that out really quick, you know. And kids, you will not watch dirty dancing ever. Don't even ask me later on the way home. But, uh, yeah, her father, my pastor, Tom Terry, his name is, um, I think it's either third great grandpa. Let's just say third great grandpa just to... Go for it. You can look it up on Wikipedia. His name is General Alfred Terry. I like to share the story because I like history. History is really cool to me. When I study it, it's alive to me. Like if I study the life of Abraham Lincoln and I really get into it, I feel like I'm there. I want to go to Antietam. I want to just take it in, you know. I want to go to Gettysburg and take it in, right? And not because there's a morbid curiosity, but a respect, you know. And so... The story goes, and it's a true story, that this General Alfred Terry says to Custer, famous Custer, don't go out there, they're going to wipe you out, you need to take this, maybe a Gatling gun, maybe he prescribed, or you need to wait, don't go in there. Well, Custer said, we can do it, so he took, what, a couple hundred guys with him, and just, you know, they never came back. But if you would have listened to the general, if you just listened to the captain, you know, follow the captain's orders if everything else fails, right? But he was, Custer was the kind of guy, he was a great leader, but he had to do it his way. And, you know, we, it, I learn a lot from that. I learn from other people's mistakes, right? We all do. And, uh, you know, if all else fails, listen to the captain's orders, right? Amen. So I'm just going to kind of finish up some of these different parts. I don't want to keep it too long tonight because, you know, at some point, you guys are probably going to be like, all right, my favorite show is starting. You better sum this up pretty quick, right? And I, want to, I want to go ahead and put a little bit of line here to darken this up. This little pier out here. Sometimes this water can crash up so high that it can take people out if they're not watching. So keep that in mind, kids, back there. Don't get cl too close to the pier if the water's crashing over the top of it. Also, if you want to get really detailed with your oil pastel work, if you use the Prismacolor, you can actually work this into oil pastel. And the reason I know that is because I, I got the idea not from my own wonderful brain, but from my brother, Joel Kornowski, who's also an artist, he says, hey, if you want to pull out some details, you should be able to use a Prismacolor oil, oil uh, colored pencil and pull out some details like that. And for some reason, they work together pretty good. And there's times where you don't want to get detail with it, you want to leave it loose, but just as a demonstration right now, 
you can see how it actually kind of sharpens some of these lines. And uh, it works every time. Sometimes if you buy certain brands, you'll find certain colors of the oil pastel that are kind of weak. <laughs> so that's why I went out and I like the red was really weak in one of the kits. So I got the Van Gogh red. You can see it. I barely use it because it's so potent. You know, it's just really strong. So as I'm finishing up, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for, for having me here. And, and uh, you know, Jennifer Burns had the idea a little while back that maybe you'd want to teach some art to some of the residents here and meet some new people. And I looked at her and said, you know, I sounds like a great idea to me. And I just, you know, more and more to me, it's, it's not even about the art I'm making. It's about the people I get to meet and the people I, I get to talk to and share. Maybe I've got a funny story that might make you laugh and make your day, you know what I mean? So, like I said, I was from Green Bay, so one of my funny stories is that uh, before they built that giant castle that they've got down there, that looks like, you know, you could put a moat around the thing, it's so big, <laughs> there used to be that old green sheet metal, and, uh, and it said Lambeau Field on it in cheaply yellow paint, you know what I mean? Just the black Lambeau Field, you could see people's heads over the top of the wall, you know, when you come home from church on a Sunday. And um, when nobody was around, uh, like, say, on, like, a Tuesday afternoon or something, or maybe a Saturday or whatever, I'd ride my bike over there, and I could sneak underneath the front door because I was a little, just a little guy, and there was probably about that much space between the asphalt and the wall on the front door area. You'd sneak right underneath there and be in Lambeau Field all by yourself and have a good time. <laughs> To this day, I kind of wish I would have run down there on the field, but I just didn't have that much guts at that moment. <laughs> Went to, to see the Packer Hall of Fame, and it was excellent. It's worth the ticket. And uh, one of these times, we're going to have to do the, the, um, the locker room visit, where you can see the lockers of the guys, like Aaron Rodgers and stuff. My wife's just going to sit there and be like, Aaron. Rogers sat on this bench. Wow. Well, look at, look at, probably all those nice lacquered benches, but his is probably like all worn out from people sitting on it. That's my guess anyways. And sometimes the girls try to flatter me and they say, Dad, you look like Aaron Rodgers. That looks like you, Dad. That looks like you. I always, I like doing portraits of, of athletes, so at one point, we did a picture of Kabir, the famous Kabir Gabaja Biamula. He's the sack leader from the Packers. And Clay Matthews, who is just ridiculously funny on the TV. He just makes me laugh every time. And then Aaron Rodgers, he's a little more dry. But he's funny because he's dry, right? You laugh at him because it's like a pity laugh, right? It's kind of funny. I had a friend tell me once, and I'll close in saying this. He says, hey, Tim, you know, at least you got something going for you. When you try to make people laugh, nobody's laughing. But every now and then you say something by accident, and it makes people laugh. He goes, I got this other friend. When he's trying and when he's not trying, he is not funny at all. <laughs> so at least I got something going for me, right? And uh, let me just edge this out a little bit more. So this is just kind of a demo. Maybe, maybe in the studio I'd work some other things into it. Um, maybe I'd pull out some other details. But sometimes the pictures that you don't think a whole lot of can be your best pieces because it's really not what it does for me, it's what it does for others. I've had pictures that I almost, they were sitting in a bucket of drawings in the basement. My wife pulls it out and goes, look at this. I go, what? This is a great drawing. <laughs> sitting in a frame now, you know what I mean? And so it's really about what it does for the viewer. And you know, it can mean something different to every person in the room. Like to me, oh, that's Algoma. You could say, that reminds me of a place I used to go when I was a kid. And it, you, just, you just feel like you're there all of a sudden. And that's the thing about art. Like, I was thinking about it last night because I couldn't sleep at 1 o'clock in the morning. So anyways, I'm thinking about art museums and how people pay tickets. And it's art museums collect hundreds, thousands of dollars every day to see paintings that are done by people who are not alive anymore. In fact, they haven't been alive for hundreds of years. But the art looks just the same as when they left it. And it's just like something unique about the visual arts is, you know, music is right up there at that moment live, but art, you know, like the art that we see in this whole building, all these beautiful art pieces, 
they just, they're, what's the word? Existential. Say it with me. Existential. Existential. Great word, isn't it? First time I heard that word was in the movie Elf. Yeah. Existential, he says. And I had to look it up because I thought it spelled, was spelled with E-G-G-S, like eggs. Well, it's not, it doesn't have eggs in existential. So, and coming from the guy that was pretty good in the spelling bee in third grade, too, I had no idea what existential <laughs> meant or how it even spelled. So, so at this point, I kind of go like this and I say, okay, that's kind of the gist of what I wanted to do with it. And maybe as an artist, you come back later on and you work a little bit on it. Like I've done portraits where I want to just let it sit for a week because you get so close to the art, you can't really see the art anymore. It's kind of like if I stared at my hand all day, I would never see anything outside of what's around my hand. And it's almost like you don't even see what you're looking at anymore. So it's good to step away from it if you're doing portraiture especially. Because I was working on a picture of my wife's late grandma, who was like a second mother to her, and, and she was mamacita. And so uh, I did a little pencil drawing of her, but as I was working on it, it was just like, not clicking. What's not clicking here? So I'll use all kinds of different tools to, to get a second eye, a third eye on it, use a mirror, take a photo of it, and compare it just back and forth. One of these things is not like the other, right? And so once I get it, then you just sense when it comes together. So hope you've enjoyed the art demo of Algoma Sunrise, mm -hmm. and hopefully uh, you invite me back sometime. It's been an honor and a privilege to meet you all and, and actually see you all still here in the room. That's very exciting. <laughs> And so it must have been fun for you. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me too. So and thank you, Facebook Live people. We'll see you again.